Hello again, this is a video where I'll be explaining about uh, gametogenesis, which is the, the process of formation of gametes. And uh, <coughs> there are the two types, which is the spermatogenesis and the oogenesis. Spermatogenesis is the process of formation of sperm in the male. And this is the process of formation of uh, eggs, also called oocyte or ovium in the female. Now we've seen the meiosis, how it occurs, and meiosis, we said it's the production of gametes, but, um, but the, it, the processes are different in males and females. The sperms are much different than the eggs, and we will see more of the differences that occur between the two types. Um, if we start with spermatogenesis, I'll be using this picture. First, it happens in the male reproductive system. Um, inside the testicles, there are tubules um, wrapped around each themselves um, million, thousands of times. Inside these tubules, if we cut the tubule in a cross section, and we will see um, something like this and spermatogenesis or from here till here occurs from the periphery, periphery of the tubule until the center where the sperms will be released and then they will go through the tubule and up until they will be released. Okay, now spermatogenesis is a continuous process um, it doesn't stop, it starts at puberty and continues until um, 80, 70 uh, years old. Um, it doesn't stop, it just decreases, the efficiency decreases with time. And it produces millions and millions of sperms, which will, and uh, the number released by the male is uh, between 200 to 600 millions of sperm. Okay, now at the at the periphery of the tubule we have these types of cells with spermatogonium or spermatogonium. You can see here that there's the word mitosis, which is the division without with keeping the same number of chromosomes, keeping identical cells. This mitosis that occurs here uh, gives more and more spermatogonia, and it occurs all the time so that we do not run out of this cell. So we always have a stock of spermatogonia, which will then, some of them will go through meiosis and through spermatogenesis to give us sperm cells. So we always have mitosis there happening, or else we'll run out of these and then the whole thing will stop. Then, um, so th these are called the germ cells, which are the cells destined to become gametes. Then, some of them will go, will, will follow one of them, um, which is still called spermatogonia here, no need to know these types. And it starts with meiosis, so it goes through interphase and it becomes a primary spermatocyte, or you, you can just say spermatocyte 1. So if here the DNA or the chromosomes were uh, single or one chromatid, when it reaches primary spermatocyte, they become double or uh, the DNA is replicated. So we have now sister chromatids. So the chromosomes are uh, double, so they are sister chromatids attached to the centromere. Then meiosis 1 occurs, so we go through prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and if you remember, anaphase 1 splits the homologous chromosomes, so these will go to one side and these will go to, one, to each other side, and then we get sper secondary spermatocyte or spermatocyte 2, where each one will have two chromosomes that are two sister chromatids. Uh, instead of four. So here we turn into haploid cells. Those, so these are now uh, haploid. Um, if we, uh, then we will continue with meiosis and while going this way, we're getting near the center of the tubule. Um, so we continue with meiosis 2, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2. And you remember in anaphase 2 we split the sister chromatids and now each one will have two chromosomes with one chromatid each. So each cell 
has this much, the half the amount that we started with, which is 4, and we call these spermatids. They are now haploid and they, they, do not, they won't change anything in their chromosome number, but they are still not functional uh, sperm cells. So they are called spermatids. And then what will happen here, which is um, differentiation, um, in differentiation, the, the spermatids will turn into sperm cells. So the nucleus will squeeze itself on the top. The cytoplasm here will be removed. It will grow a flagellum, which appears here. And um, we will have an acrosome here, which contains digestive enzymes necessary for sperm when it reaches the egg to digest the surface and enters. And therefore, we have four functional sperms by one meiosis. We have millions of meioses happening throughout all these tubers, throughout all these this surface area, and all of them are produced together. So there isn't actually a cycle or regulation for the spermatogenesis, which is different when we come to oogenesis. Oogenesis is the production of uh, eggs or oocyte uh, in the female. It happens in the uh, ovaries and it starts before birth, so when the when the girl is still in her mother's uh, uterus or her mother's womb. And where it's similar to till now to spermatogenesis, we have just like spermatogonia, we have oogonia, which we undergo mitosis so that we get a large number of or stock of these cells. But then all of them will go through um, growth and interface, so if the chromosomes were like this, they become primary oocyte where the chromosomes become uh, sister chromatids. So here we have went through S phase and then we have the first uh, pause or uh, they put it here. So we have the first pause which is when they are primary oocyte or oocyte 1, uh, the chromosomes are like this, and this is birth. So when the, when the girl is born, all her, there's no more oogonia, all of them are primary oocyte, and she has a limited number, well she has, she, she has thousands of them, but it's a limited number of oocytes in her ovaries. Nothing will happen until um, puberty. So when we reach, when the girl reaches puberty, a lot of her primary oocyte have died and now she has a fewer number of oocytes, which will last her around 20, 30, 40 years until she reaches menopause, which is when she's out of uh, egg cells. Anyway, when she reaches puberty, every cycle or every month, one primary oocyte or one of the oocyte ones that are present there will go through the first meiosis where prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and then it splits into a secondary oocyte and a polar body. So you see here the splitting is unequal. The polar body is very small and just carries the extra chromosomes and here now it has a two non-homologous chromosome and it's a haploid cell just like uh, secondary spermatocyte. Why does it split unevenly? Because we need all the cytoplasm in this area or in, in one cell and all the organelles in one cell so that when fertilization occurs this cell can sustain the beginning of a new uh, zygote and a new baby or a new embryo. So we need, instead of splitting them into two, and having half here, half here, and less chances of survival, now we keep them in one place, and the polar body is just to remove the excess chromosome, so that uh, the proper number of chromosomes is found. Here comes the second stop, which is at ovulation. Ovulation is when this is released from the ovary, and it, it awaits in the, in the tubes, it awaits for the sperm. So, after the puberty, every month, one oocyte 1 continues becomes oocyte 2 is released in the middle of the month or the cycle usually and awaits the sperm and it's stopped as oocyte 2. Now there are two, two cases. 
it's either there is no fertilization so the cell will just die as oocyte 2 it didn't finish meiosis and then uh, we will have uh, menstruation or it will go out with the remains of the thickness of the uterus out of the body and then the cycle starts again where another oocyte 1 goes through all of this the second case is when there is fertilization when uh, so this, there is a sperm and it had entered the egg. The moment the sperm have entered the egg, the cell continues the second meiosis, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and splits the sister chromatids, puts half of them in the another polar body, the second polar body, and now it, it is called, we call it now an oo-tid. This oo-tid already has the sperm inside it now. So the nucleus here will contain these two non-homologous, these are not homologous chromosomes, two, but two chromosomes because we have the number, and the sperm would be having two already there. So it's very brief amount, uh, it's a very short time. It splits again, and then the nucleus of the oocyte and the nucleus of the sperm join. And we have directly a zygote with four chromosomes. We have that a zygote and two of its chromosomes uh, are from the mother and two came from the sperm cell from the father and that's a zygote. Of course in a human it will be 23, 23 and it's 46. This process is fertilization. And this is how uh, this happens. So in uh, oocyte if we want to compare it with, I mean oogenesis if you want to compare it with spermatogenesis it's not uh, continuous, it uh, starts before birth and one per month, at least only one. The meiosis doesn't lead to four cells, it leads only to one cell. And at a certain age, the, the woman will reach um, what we call the menopause, where the whole thing stops and she doesn't produce any more eggs. This is the two, two, two processes, spermatogenesis or genesis. I hope these are helpful and thank you.